Welcome to Clean With Me Podcast. I'm Jessica. And I'm Ronnie. This is a podcast where we literally walk you through cleaning your house step by step. So let's clean together. Thanks for joining me. In this episode, I'm going to talk about something called the 15-minute method. So I encourage you to get up off the couch or bed, put your cleaning shoes on, whether it's tennis shoes or slides, whatever you like to clean in, or maybe you like to clean barefoot. I personally don't. If my floor needs to be swept in the kitchen, I'd rather put on some slides, clean the kitchen, and then sweep afterward. But maybe you're not working in the kitchen. Maybe you're tackling your bedroom. That's definitely a problem area off and on at my house. Or maybe you want to just spend 15 minutes in the kitchen. Now, if you're overwhelmed right now, I'm not going to have a long introduction where we gear up or whatever, but you may want to at least take out the trash because usually in a 15-minute session, you're going to be throwing away trash in whatever room you're working in. So what I want you to do is just jump right in, get up, get moving, and spend 15 minutes in the worst problem area or maybe the area that you need to prioritize today, okay? So this morning, I had been babysitting my grandbabies overnight, two under two. Um, I held the baby a lot yesterday in the evening. I guess my teenagers kind of ransacked my kitchen in the meantime And then um, I got up this morning to a disaster. Now, today is my teenage daughter's day to do dishes, but I felt like this would be a little overwhelming for her. So what I did is I went into the kitchen and I spent about 15 minutes and you would be amazed how much I got done in there. Yes, I went to bed with a messy kitchen. I was struggling, folks, okay? It looked like it would take forever to clean the kitchen, you would think. But I got a lot done. I put a huge dent in it in just 15 minutes. And what I did is I started throwing away trash. And of course, I had someone take out the trash so that I'd have room to put more trash in. Putting things away that were on the counter, just kind of thinning thinning things down. And my dishwasher was already empty, which made a huge difference in what I was able to accomplish because over the years I've been in a pattern of doing an empty reload and run, but lately we've separated the emptying process from the loading process. Like we're putting away the clean dishes at a different time than when we load the dishwasher. So that did make a huge difference, but I just started pre-rinsing things and getting them into the dishwasher. The things that were you know, had dried on food or whatever, I got those few things soaking. So I totally thinned down the mess in the kitchen. I did not have time to complete the job because I needed to record the show before I start my day job. My daughter had already come back to pick up the kids. So she took over with them while I went into the kitchen and started started cleaning in there. I got the dishwasher running and now there are just a few things soaking. So then my daughter, who is supposed to do the dishes today, was told, hey, you have dishes, you know, make sure that you do your math and that you do these dishes. My kids, if you're not, if you're new to the show, my kids are in a hybrid school. It's a private school where they go in person on some days and then they do their work at home on other days of the week. So that's why our chore schedule is maybe a little different than yours. If you're either homeschooling or your kid's in a hybrid school, y- you get it. But if not, that's okay. I've I've kind of done it all. Like I've been a public school mom, a homeschool mom, a private school mom, currently a private school mom. So anyway, my point is that I felt really overwhelmed and I just thought, wow, I'm facing a disaster and I really haven't faced a true disaster in a while. It really wasn't a disaster. It just felt like one. Mostly what had happened, because we're using paper plates and paper bowls now, so just routinely. So really what had happened is there was just a lot of clutter on the countertops that made it seem like there were more dishes than there were. 
I didn't have to put away clean dishes before loading the dishwasher, so it really wasn't as bad of a dis- disaster as I I felt like it was. And my point is that if you just jump in and start working on something for 15 minutes, and I mean giving it your full attention, you will make progress. Maybe that's all you have. I I can empathize with those of you with little ones since I've been taking care of little ones. You don't have a lot of spare time to necessarily put in an hour of cleaning. I mean, you might, you might not, but especially in the evenings. I mean, with little ones, if you're a stay-at-home mom, there's the nap time, but sometimes their naps don't coordinate and there's only a few minutes of overlap. I've definitely been there. My kids were not as close together as these two grandbabies are. They were not as close together in age. My closest age gap with my kids is two and a half years, but I still had, you know, those times where I had to get the little toddler down for a nap and the baby and those did not perfectly correspond all the time, but I kind of had a schedule and a system. I will say it's a little harder when you're babysitting kids that are not your own, even if they're your grandbabies that you see all the time and they like you and they're happy to be at your house. They're still out of their routine and you have, and you don't have an established routine. Like, you know, me as a grandparent, I don't have, you know, a set schedule. I don't know their exact routine per se. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit harder. But when I had my little ones, I I did have a certain time of day where I would lay down. And I'm talking about when I had the two and a half year apart pairs going on at different times. I have a total of six kids, but my youngest three are two and a half years apart. So when my middle son and my youngest daughter were a toddler and a baby, I, I had the system of trying to make their naps overlap as much as possible. And I also had that system when my two youngest, my youngest daughter was a two and a half year old, and then I had youngest son was the baby. And so I would have to lay down with the toddler on the bed while the baby was taking a nap, but then it would take a while to get the toddler to sleep. And then, you know, there was that time when they were both asleep, but sometimes I wouldn't even clean during that time. Sometimes I would just relax. But a lot of times I would get up and do something like load the dishwasher, you know, and spend 15 minutes in my kitchen. Because, yeah, kids take a two-hour nap, but when you have more than one, you might have a 15-minute overlap where they're both asleep. So I don't want to go on and on about that point because we're not all in that season of life. That's just on my mind right now because I've been taking care of littles. So yes, my dishwasher is running. Yes, I only have a few things soaking for the next dishwasher load that my daughter will handle while I'm working. Um, yes, my floor is a little sticky though, okay, <laughs> from feeding a toddler pancakes and syrup. I'll, I'll get to that after work. I'll get to that. Maybe on my lunch break, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, do a sweep and mop. But anyway, hopefully you are working on something in your house whether you need to just get that dishwasher loaded or wash that sink load by hand, or if you just need to get your bedroom picked up. The same thing often happens to me with my bedroom. It'll get messy and I'll be thinking, this is going to take a long time. Like I've really fallen behind in here, but just looks can be deceiving. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes our houses are out of control and it can take days or weeks to really get them where they need to be. You know, we're we're dealing with clutter and disorder, and it can take time. It took time to get that way, and it can take time to get out of that situation. I get that. But what I'm talking about is just putting a dent in it for 15 minutes at least every single day. Now, obviously, whenever I tell myself, I need to spend 15 minutes a day cleaning, I, I kind of go, no, I need to spend an hour a day. Well, that's the goal, but it's sometimes unrealistic to really spend an hour each day cleaning, you know, depending on the season of life, um, what you've got going on, whether you're babysitting other people's kids, whether you 
have little ones of your own, whether you're working two jobs, whether you're not sleeping well at night, you're depressed. I mean, there are all these obstacles where it's not always practical to be able to clean an hour a day. But I would submit to you that some of you might not even be spending a good 15 minutes every single day. And then the next day, your house is kind of a disaster. Because I I would say yesterday, I don't think I really did any housework other than emptying the dishwasher. Okay, that that's not a 15 minute job. That's like a three minute job. So it basically wasn't enough. That led to me feeling overwhelmed today. So I would encourage you to have kind of a 15 minute minimum rule. We really all have, even in our most hectic time, hectic times, we really all have 15 minutes that we could dedicate to cleaning. And it may not sound like a lot because a lot of times when we're cleaning, we're doing it half-heartedly. We're multitasking. But when you fully concentrate on cleaning for 15 minutes and just move quickly and don't get distracted and don't do anything else, that's that's the sweet spot. That's where you can really get a lot done. And if you did that every day for a week, no, your house is not going to be perfect, but you're going to be making some headway. Okay. Um, one of my listeners took some time off of work to get caught up on her house, binged my episodes, such an inspiring story. But sometimes we're not at a point where we can do that. We don't have the PTO at work. We're, you know, we're just not able to take the time off. But what we can do is that solid 15 minutes. We're not going to accomplish as much as the lady who took time off to fully get her house under control. But we can make some progress. It will just take longer. It's kind of like, you know, if you're trying to lose weight and you're losing a pound a week, every week, well, over a year, you would lose 52 pounds. That's a lot, even though it doesn't feel like you're making a lot of progress, even though, you know, maybe your friend went on a diet for a wedding that's two months away and lost 50 pounds in that time, you know, progress is still good. So, During these busy seasons of life, let's try to make sure that we put in that 15 minutes and that, and a good 15 minutes, a fast 15 minutes, meaning we're moving quickly through it, not the leisurely cleaning where maybe you're talking to people in your family while you're straightening up and you kind of get sidetracked and wander out of the room you know, that type of cleaning, there's a place for that. I mean, obviously we interact with our families. That's why like open house or open concept floor plans are popular because people like to be able to talk to their family in the living room while they're cleaning the kitchen and stuff like that. But what I'm talking about, in addition to just that casual, slow cleaning, You need to put in a fast 15 minutes every day, whether it's um, loading your dishwasher and clearing clutter off the countertops, um, scrubbing the floor of your shower one day. Um, That's something I did the other night. I scrubbed the floor of my shower and it wasn't as hard as it sounds. I basically, I don't have one of those spinny things like you see on TikTok, like a power tool for it. But I use like the Scotch Bright scrubber where it kind of looks like a dish wand, but it's on a longer pole. I use that and some Comet. I got the floor wet, sprinkled some Comet, scrubbed it with that to kind of coat the floor. And then I just let it sit for a while, came back to it later, rinsed it. And it looks great. That's a small task that probably took me less than 15 minutes. Okay. Um, another thing, like I said, I was talking about, you could pick up your room in 15 minutes. My room looks like a disaster right now because I've been, you know, dealing with kids and don't get me wrong. I love babysitting my grandkids and everything, but I'm not used to it. It's out of the routine and it's 
work on top of the other responsibilities I already have. So my house tends to get messy while I'm spending quality time with the grandkids and that's okay. But all I really need to get my room under control again is to make sure my hamper is empty so I can put things in the hamper and maybe empty my wastebasket or grab a trash bag so that I can throw away any trash. Um, those two things right there are going to take care of a lot of it. Um, throw my bedding in the wash, put my shoes in the closet. I could probably do all of that in 15 minutes. Okay, it's not on the agenda right now, but I'll probably do it after work. Okay, so I hope you got 15 minutes of work done during this episode. It's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to follow us on our social medias. I'm not asking you to use a type of social media that you're not already using. I'm just asking you to follow us on whatever you're on. So on Facebook, you can look up our page, Clean With Me Podcast. Um, on TikTok, you can follow me or Jessica or the show itself, um, Clean With Me Podcast. Just do a search for it. Instagram, you can follow me, Ronnie Starnes, or Jessica. She's on there too. She has a few accounts on there. And also, if you are going to be doing something on your house every day, you need more episodes. That's where the bonus content comes in. Special, special thanks to my financial supporters who are already subscribing to bonus content, either through Apple Podcasts or Patreon. We greatly appreciate that. And if you want to know more about that, visit our website, cleanwithmepodcast.com or click on the link in the episode notes. But most of all, just keep listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, happy cleaning. We'll talk to you in the next episode.